But this is, this is a global phenomenon. So as the world is becoming more global, uh, internet is really helping companies uh, find global markets for their goods. I'll talk now to Taneli Ruda. He is from Thomson Reuters and he is an expert in international trade. I'll ask you about trends. What is the trend here in South America? In South America, we're seeing a massive comeback from a recession, especially felt here in Brazil. And I'm just seeing a lot of optimism uh, around uh, Brazil uh, about the prospects of economic growth and political stability. Now, I'll ask you about the United States. What is happening there regarding international trade? Over the past year, uh, during Trump's presidency, we've seen definitely a lot of talk about more protectionist tendencies. Uh, big news around trade is basically in the headlines every day. Uh, there's a lot of talk about NAFTA and renewing NAFTA, or maybe even the uh, uh, United States leaving the NAFTA area. And a lot of tough talk around uh, re uh, inf uh, enforcing uh, customs regulations and import and export regulations uh, in a much more forceful way than before, as well as uh, making sure that more manufacturing jobs are created in the United States at the expense of importing goods. So there's a lot of trade-related discussions going on in the United States right now. And what is happening in Europe? Lots of protectionism or not? That's an interesting question. It's a really a mixed, uh, mixed uh, continent. Brexit and UK leaving the European Union, of course, is the big news right now uh, all over Europe. And you could argue that we have two tendencies. The one tendency is uh, UK becoming a more isolated country uh, outside of European Union, losing a lot of the trade privileges both with European Union, but also losing the privilege to use the free trade agreements uh, that has been uh, negotiated with European Union, essentially having to start from scratch and creating its new trade infrastructure uh, with the rest of the world. On the other hand, European Union is really embracing free trade. So they are discussing uh, free trade agreements with Canada, with Brazil and Japan, major trade partners. So it looks like European Union, on the other hand, is going the other way, becoming more liberal in trade and embracing the world more in terms of trade. Asia. Asia is really, really interesting as well. So the big story in Asia, of course, over the past uh, 20 years has been the rise of China. And China now has become uh, a rich country uh, by many metrics, especially the coastal areas. And uh, China grew into prominence in manufacturing by manufacturing cheap stuff uh, and exporting that to the rest of the world. And it still does a lot of that. There's a lot of lower end manufacturing going on in China. But China has come to its own as a manufacturer of higher value added goods. And while in the past you could see China importing a lot of uh, raw materials, but also uh, components from places like Germany and Switzerland and uh, United States and UK, and then assembling them into finished goods and then later exporting them, we're starting to see that the Chinese companies are able to manufacture very high value added goods, create a lot of very sophisticated software, and not just export all of that they make, they're increasingly consuming a lot of the things they make. So they've really become an industrial power. And related to that, since manufacturing in China isn't as cheap as it used to be, a lot of the lower end manufacturing is moving into other places like Vietnam, Thailand, and even India is uh, now starting to rise uh, uh, as a manufacturing and an export location, which I think is a really interesting trend given the demographics of the country. They have a lot of young labor uh, that is hungry to look for higher value added jobs and manufacturing and export driven manufacturing in particular could be a really interesting way for the uh, country to grow. What's the newest regarding technology to help international trade? International trade has gotten much more complex over the past 20 years, especially since 9-11. There's been uh, a lot more regulation uh, related to exporting goods, uh, and there's been a proliferation of free trade agreements. There's now over 400 free trade agreements in the world today. And as companies are building global supply chains and basically trying to manufacture goods in multiple locations and export them around the world uh, uh, in new uh, areas of consumption, including uh, the growing uh, countries and economies in, in Asia, their supply chains have just exploded in complexity. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for them to keep track of all the regulations that they, they, need, to, uh, uh, they need to comply with for staying compliant, let alone 
uh, with all the regulations that are available for them to get various benefits like duty reductions under various special programs and, and free trade agreements. And companies are increasingly looking at automation for helping solve these problems. Uh, for example, automating free trade agreement uh, compliance is a huge step for companies in taking use of free trade agreements and lowering their cost of goods sold. Coming back to Brazil, you said Brazil is making easier to companies to export. Is that right? That's right. So, uh, as uh, Brazil entered the most recent recession, uh, there was suddenly a lot of excess manufacturing capacity available uh, as uh, companies were not uh, finding as many buyers for their goods in the domestic markets. And at the same time, same time the Brazilian currency, the KI, uh, plunged uh, compared to many of the other uh, currencies, which suddenly made uh, Brazil a very competitive place to manufacture and export goods out of. The problem traditionally has been that Brazil has had a lot of regulation. The tax system is famously uh, complex and difficult to comply with. Uh, but the Brazilian industry and the Brazilian government have kind of risen to this challenge and uh, they've started a slew of initiatives uh, to make manufacturing and exporting goods out of uh, Brazil easier. Uh, one example is the Rikoff SPED legislation, which just uh, uh, has been introduced recently, which allows an even larger part of companies to take use of the Rikoff uh, system, uh, which gives them many benefits in exporting goods uh, out, of, out of the country and be able to be even more competitive in the global markets. Does it include also small companies? Yes. So even smaller companies uh, can competitively uh, now uh, apply to Rick of SPED and also, also the other uh, uh, benefits available uh, by the Brazilian government. But this is, this is a global phenomenon. So as the world is becoming more global, uh, internet is really helping companies uh, find global markets for their goods. So traditionally you had to be a large company to, to, to do international business. Uh, but since the advent of the internet, uh, and the uh, ease of doing uh, logistics by outsourcing it to uh, logistics companies. Even very small companies can become international from, from day one. It is very easy for you to start up a manufacturing operation or even a retail operation that is serving customers around the world uh, by outsourcing a lot of the activities uh, needed for logistics, uh, but also using things like uh, sophisticated software to help lower the barriers of doing, uh, doing international trade. I'd like you to talk about Onson Reuters tool to help businesses. I'd be happy to. So I'm managing director of a suite of tools called OneSource Global Trade. Uh, this is an internationally available set of software tools and research products that allow companies to uh, deal with all global trade compliance related activities. This includes things like customs compliance, valuation and classification of the goods that are crossing borders, uh, filing electronically or on paper all the customs documentation to make sure that they're compliant. Our solution also allows uh, companies to screen their counterparties to make sure that they're not dealing with uh, criminals or known terrorists or anybody who is in a government sanctioned party list and uh, take use of uh, various uh, incentive programs like the FTAs that I, free trade agreements that I just mentioned or other benefits like the RECOF system uh, to make sure that they have a comprehensive package that allows them to not just be compliant but also make use of all the uh, export benefits and import benefits available to them. And finally, uh, I would ask you if you are optimistic about the, the world economy and international trade. I am very optimistic about the uh, world uh, economy right now. Uh, we've taken many, many years to come back from the Great Recession of the 2008-2009 years. Some economies have recovered sooner, uh, some have taken a longer time to recover from that. Uh, but I see very positive signs uh, in all continents uh, on continued economic growth. I'm particularly optimistic about new technologies uh, driving uh, a new wave of uh, economic growth. And despite there are some signs of some, com some countries being more protection protectionist than before, uh, I do believe that on the balance uh, there is a tendency towards freer trade or more trade uh, allowing uh, even uh, relatively underdeveloped countries to rise up the economic ladder and become richer. And can we be optimistic with the Brazilian development? I'm seeing a lot of really encouraging signs in Brazil. So today I've been uh, spending, uh, spending today talking to a lot of uh, import and export and trade and trade leaders and economic leaders in, in Brazil. And I'm feeling a very optimistic mood. 
uh, it looks like Brazil has returned to uh, returned to economic growth. Um, Brazil has used uh, the difficult years over the past few years to strengthen its infrastructure, strengthen its, its legislation, make it easier to do business. Uh, it is very competitive from a currency standpoint, uh, and the world really needs the goods that uh, Brazil makes. So I'm very optimistic for Brazil and its future. And what clients can do to take more information about Thomson Reuters products? As a very first step, we have a uh, excellent website, tr.com or thompsonreuters.com, either one works. Uh, you can look for information about our products and I'm personally very happy to take any questions that your, uh, your viewers may have, uh, so feel free to contact me or any of my colleagues, I'd be more than happy to tell more about our offering. Thank you so much for your participation, welcome to Brazil. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. Luciene Miranda to Duke Escop TV.